So this is what we'll be making in Unreal Engine today. It's a very simple ball game with WASD movement and also jump. So I have opened the Unreal Editor, selected games and a blank template. I will call my project uh, something like ball game 2. We'll create and we'll wait for Unreal Editor to load. So I think that was fairly quick and uh, let me just in decrease the size of these thumbnails a bit. Now we will make a new map. In this blank project, we will make a new map or a new level. We will make a new level. Leave it as new world and we will open it. Yes, we will save. And from the windows, we will add sky and some atmosphere. So to do that, we will go to the windows and window and environment light mixture. Now from here, we will add all of these things here. We will add all of these things. Now that this is how it looks. Let's add the floor. So the floor is a simple cube. So we will add a very, very basic cube here. And I want to scale it up a bit. I want to scale the X and Y a bit. So we will scale the X and Y by 60. We will leave the Z as one. And uh, I want to add some nice material to this. So we will go to Quixel. So we will look for concrete. Pavement. Yes, that. This is the one that I like. I have downloaded this one. You can use any other. I have already downloaded it, so I will add it to our project. Now that it has been added in the Mega Scans folder, surfaces, and yes, this is the one. We will drop it on our cube. It's a bit bigger, it's a bit large than expected, so I will edit it. And I will change the tiling a bit. I will change the tiling to 5 and 5 on both X and Y. So it looks a bit better. That is our floor. Now let's make our player. We will go to the content folder. I will be adding a blueprint class. We will inherit from the pawn. I will call it BP player. I will also add a controller. So blueprint controller, we will add a blueprint class player controller. We will call it BP controller. I will also add a game mode. So let's quickly add a game mode. So this will tell our game which uh, player to spawn. Let's set the settings in our game mode. So our controller is the custom controller that we made and our default pawn is the custom player that we made. We will compile and save this. We also need to tell Unreal Engine, Unreal Editor to use the game mode that we made. So we will go to the project settings. Under maps and modes, we will tell it to use the custom game mode that we made that is BP game mode. And while we are here, we also set this. We will also set the map that we just made. This is the new world map that we just made. So we just, we just set it here. And now we can start working. So first, let's get a ball into our pro player. So this is our player and uh, the ball is also Quixel content. So we will quickly get another Quixel content. We will look for ball. This is the one I like and I have already downloaded it. You need to download it and I will add it to the project. You can add anything else that you like. This is the static mesh that we will be, we'll be using. I will edit the static mesh. In this static mesh, I will add enable nanite support because if we don't do it, sometimes it looks very bad. So after enabling nanite support, I will also add collision, add spares, simplified collision to it. We will save it. So that is our stack mesh. Now we will add the mesh to our player. So we will go, go to mega scans, 3D assets, and we will add the ball here. We will make the ball our default scene root by dragging it on top of that default scene root. And we will rename it, we will call it ball. 
Now on this ball, we need to change a few settings. So we will go to physics here. Here is physics. We will say simulate physics. Yes. And uh, actually our ball will go very fast if we have these settings. So to make it go a little bit slower, we will change the settings. We will change the linear damping to 0 0.5 and we will change the angular damping to 1. Now that is done. We will also add a camera component to our player but before that let's add a spring arm component and inside the spring arm component we will add our camera component. Now for both of these we need to change some settings let's do that. So we will type rotation here and we will use spawn control rotation. We need to do that for camera as well. For camera as well we need to do spawn control rotation. So make sure that for both the spring arm and the camera we have pawn control rotation both camera and spring arm we have that okay we compile and save it now on the bowl we also need to enable hit events so because we will be looking for collision later for this ball so we will enable this simulation generates hit events okay now for now that is all for a player we will go to the controller blueprint in the content folder we are going to the controller blueprint here in the begin play we want a quick reference to our player we will say get controlled on yeah and we will cast it to the custom player that we made yeah so cast to bp player we will promote it to variable I will just call it BP player. That is it for our begin play. Now in the event tick, we will handle our movement. So we will be handling movement for uh, W, A, S, and D keys. We will go forward, left, right, and backwards. To handle these four keys, I will just add a sequence. So we in the tick, we will handle all of these keys one, one after another. I will also add two more pins here. So total we have four pins. So first we will handle the W key. So first we will say is input key down. And here we will click this little keyboard and press W. And we will add a branch. So if W is down, we want our ball to go forward. To do that we will add a force to it so it goes forward we will add a force in the forward direction so we will get our player we will get the ball component here get ball variable so it will be under variables default get ball to this ball we will add a force This force will be acceleration change. So mass does not have an effect on this. Okay. And uh, from the player, we also want to get our camera component. It will be under variables, default camera. And we want the forward vector. Now, this is a unit vector. So we want to multiply it by some number. We will change this pin, convert it pin to floor. I just like 1000. You can try and experiment with different values. We will connect it to the force. And that is how we add force in the forward direction. That is how we handle the W key. We will do the same for all of the remaining keys. But uh, first, let's just select all of these. Press C to comment. And uh, let's say handle W key. We will select all of these nodes, copy it, and paste them below. We will change the comment to say handle the S key. In this little keyboard, we will press S. So we, will, we are handling the S key. And here, since it is the forward vector and we want the player to go backwards, we will multiply it by negative 1000. Not positive 1000, we will multiply it by negative 1000. So it goes back in, in the backwards direction. We will connect this to the second pin here. So here we are handling the S key. 
let's also add controls for the a key we will copy the s nodes and we will say that we are coming in the a key in this little keyboard we will click it and press a so we are checking if a is down then no we don't want the forward vector here we want to get the right vector and we will connect this right vector here and yes it is right by a we want to go left this is right vector so yes we want to multiply by negative 1000 now we will connect these to the third pin here let's do the same for the d key as well we will copy all of these a nodes all of these nodes for the a key and we will change the comment to say we are handling the d key we will click on this little keyboard and say we are handling d key and we will multiply it by positive 1000 because d by d we want the player to go right and this is the right vector so that is the right direction we want to multiply it by positive 1000 now we will connect it to the fourth pin there now that is all we need to do to add the movement but we also want to handle the mouse right we want to be able to look in different directions and rotate the camera to do that we will add some mouse events so we will add uh, event mouse x yes that is it we will also add event mouse y it will be here and uh, in x we want to add the your input so we will say add your input so to this controller we will add your input access value it will be the value that we need now for y we will add the pitch input and before connecting this value here we will multiply it by negative one you can try it without negative one and see how you like you can experiment with the different values but that is what i like so we should be able to rotate our camera as well now we will compile and save it let's see how it looks before that we also need to add a simple player start so this player start we will select it and if we put it on top of this floor and press the end key on our keyboard it will snap to floor so we will snap it to floor and it is looking nice so now let's see let's play and see what happens okay it does not work well it works but the ball is too small so let's make the ball a bit bigger so we will select the ball and in this scale we will lock it and we will increase the size 10 times now it should look better the ball was a bit too smaller okay so we are able to move the ball by w a d and s keys okay we need to add the jump ability so let's do that now we will look for the spacebar key when the spacebar is pressed we want to jump let's also add a variable to check if we can jump we will compile it and when the game starts of course we can jump so by default it must be true we will compile again and we will check if we can jump so we will get can jump add a branch and if we can jump first thing we will set this can jump to false so we cannot just keep jumping again and again and then we will add an impulse to our ball so it goes upwards so we will get our player we will get the ball variable we will add impulse this will be velocity change so mass does not have an effect and uh, impulse in the z direction it will be 1000 let's see if we can jump yes we can jump and we cannot just keep jumping but uh, we also cannot jump after we hit the ground let's fix it so we will select the ground we will select the ground and here we will look for tags 
in the tags for this ground we will add a tag and we will call it ground now there can be many better ways to fix it i just found this one very fast and convenient so this is what i'm showing you guys so we are adding a tag to our ground which is called ground there should be no spaces here it should be exactly like this now after that we will go to our player blueprint we are not going to the controller blueprint for now we are going to our player blueprint now from the player blueprint we want to look for the hit event so i told you guys in in this poll we need to enable hit events simulate generating events now with this wall selected we can look for on component hit okay and other actor we want to look if the other actor has tag the actor that hit doesn't have a tag of ground we want to add a branch because if the actor has tag of ground if the actor is ground we want our ball to be able to jump again so to do that we need to set this can jump to true how do we do that well these are two different blueprints but we can get our controller so we will get player controller we will get player controller we will cast it to the custom controller that we made and as bp controller we can change its variable set can jump yes we can set can jump to true now we should be able to jump again okay after we hit the ground we should be able to jump so yes we are able to move and we are able to jump so this is a very simple ball game in unreal engine this is how it works and it looks pretty fine and pretty nice it was pretty quick thank you